Hey y'all, um, this video will be about my book on Calvinism. I published this one about 10 years ago. The publication date is June 27, 2014. <laughs> that was, uh, that was about six months after my first daughter was born. And that's when I first started publishing books because, um, obviously I was hoping to make some money for my new baby. Okay, here's my description on this book on Calvinism. John Calvin was someone who lived a really long time ago. And a lot of theological concepts are based off of this guy. And we had to read part of his book in this. I was in a great books program in my college. For all the smartest kids in my college. But um, anyways, he wrote this ginormous book. It's like that thick. Like really, really thick. Like bigger than the Bible. And I remember thinking, what the heck? Like who would write that much <laughs> and why would he expect somebody to read his book over the Bible or you know probably a lot of people read his book instead of the Bible well, it's kind of messed up but literally his book Institutes of Christian Theology is like one and a half times as thick as the Bible okay so he came up with the concept once saved always saved which is from his idea of the perseverance of the saints is that biblical I don't know so I said, the topic of once saved, always saved is very complex. How do we know for sure that we are saved? And how do we know for sure that we will persevere? Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Now that's interesting because he says, I never knew you. So that obviously implies that they were never Christian, not necessarily that they were Christian and then they lost it. So, uh, these people he speaks of thought they were saved, but they were not. How many of us think we are saved, but really are not? Perhaps the issue of Calvinism is not so much, can you lose your salvation, but rather, why should we assume we are saved when maybe we are not? Many people miss God by 12 inches, from the distance from their head to their heart, Many have a head faith, but not a heart faith. A head faith will not save you. You have to believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and you will be saved. And then here's the chapter titles for my book. So the first chapter I did a study of the ifs in the Bible. There's a lot of ifs, like if you persevere to the end. Um, I can't think of all the verses that say if, but there's a lot. But you can just search um, open, well, this might work. Open Bible is a great website, and you can just search Open Bible if and it might work. Anyways, there's a lot of verses that seem to make it sound like, yeah, you're saved, but your salvation is contingent on XYZ. Which you could say, okay, but we're not saved by our works. But in James, he says, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. And Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits. So, yes, we're saved by faith. You know, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, not a result of work so that no one may boast. But how I heard it explained is that you don't save yourself by your works, but you show that you're saved by your works, if that makes sense. So if you're truly saved, you will have good works. Um, okay, are we once saved, always saved? On the five points of Calvinism, on the perseverance of the saints, make sure that you are still running. Yeah, Jesus says, if you endure to the end, you will be saved. To him who overcomes, I will give the crown of life. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling. You shall know them by their fruits. Anyways, there's a lot of really good verses that definitely seem to show that obviously the way that you live matters, you know, and you can't just assume that since you got baptized or you prayed the prayer or you grew up in church or you've been going to church every Sunday your whole life, none of those things necessarily save you, you know. You know, the Bible says, if, we can, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And that's like a big thing. Like that's, if you say Jesus is Lord, you're saying that Jesus is your king. Jesus is your God. Jesus is in charge of you. You know, that's what it means. Jesus is Lord. Like I'm not my own Lord. Nobody is my Lord except for Jesus. Nobody can dictate my actions and my life except for Jesus and the Bible. You know, you got to listen for that still small voice in your head, you know. Listen to God, not the world. Amen. Amen. And uh, check out my book on Calvinism by Lisa Bedrick on Amazon. God bless you. God bless. Bye.